how many plants can we find on a casual day hike that'll take a spark from a flint and steel without any charring? Is that pearly? Yeah, yeah, that's pearly ever asking. If you saw our plant ranking video that compiled years of flint and steel no char research, you may remember Pearly Everlasting. And although it takes first prize for plant name most likely to appear in a fairy tale, it was only in the average category for taking an ember from a flint and steel. You also might recall that you can use both the blossoms and the dead leaves, but we'll just try the leaves here since they were more effective in our past experiments. Okay, that's one plant down and we're off to a good start. Let's keep hiking and see what else is out there. Turtle. So hedge nettle was another middle of the pack plant for making no char flint and steel fire tinder. It didn't rank very high in our research video that we did, but we have been able to make it work pretty consistently. So let's just see how it does out here in the wild. When we first started our flint and steel no char journey, we got all kinds of advice from people about striking methods. And most of the comments were related to the sparks flying up or flying down. Well, after thousands and thousands of strike attempts now, the striking method does matter, but in almost every scenario, there are some sparks that fly both up and down, which is why you will see us prepared in both directions most of the time. And in this case, it was the sparks flying down that grabbed onto our hedge nettle. Okay, that's two successful plant tenders on our list, both of which, by the way, are pretty common plants where we live in the Pacific Northwest. But let's see what else is out there. Well, it sure felt good to come across this legend. Pacific water leaf is a legend in the realm of flint and steel, no char fire making. Well, at least it is with us. We've still never seen or heard of anyone using this for flint and steel, but it is spectacular. We discovered this quite by accident while trying to ignite stinging nettle tinder and a stray spark landed and smoldered on a small piece of dead water leaf. You might say that that was the spark that started it all for us as it really made us ask ourselves what other plants around us could achieve this. I would say let's see how it does here, but we already know how it's going to do. Multiple sparks caught hold on this batch, and I can't say we were at all surprised. Please, will someone out there replicate this with water leaf and leave us a comment so that we can feel good knowing that someone else is out there sharing in the same success with this great plant. Okay, time to get moving again. We know there are more successful plants out there somewhere, and we've spent years now learning which ones will give us the best chance of success. Now it's just a matter of finding them. Broadleaf Doc scored a 6.5 on our no-char ranking list, so we figured we had a pretty good shot at adding another success here when we came across this patch. Now let's see how it performs. Again, we're gonna put it on top of our flint, but we're gonna have a nice pile below as well to catch the stray sparks that fall down. It would seem logical that the tinder closest to where the sparks originate would have a better chance of forming an ember, and many times that is the case. But still, we are never surprised to see the sparks that fall onto the tinder below catch and form an ember. Okay, now we're walking into a more wooded area with more shade, and it was great to see a familiar friend waiting for us. We have used stinging nettle for so many tasks and projects, and maybe none more significant than the discoveries that it has led us to in the realm of flint and steel fire making without charring. But before we jump straight to the fire attempt, can we just take a second and appreciate what this guy is accomplishing barehanding this stinging nettle without getting stung a single time. I think he processed this nettle quicker and more efficiently barehanded than I could do with the gloves on. No substitute for experience, I'd say. Now, ever since our original stinging nettle discoveries were made for flint and steel fire making, we received several comments sharing with us successes and failures and questions about how to make this work with stinging nettle. One important detail that we emphasize that is perhaps being skipped from time to time is the importance of scraping off the outer shiny layer of the peelings after they've been peeled off of the stock. We do this immediately after harvesting and before drying, and it significantly increases our success rate. After peeling, scraping, and drying for a couple of hours, these nettles are now ready to be worked up and accept a spark from a flint and steel. We ranked stinging nettle 7.5, and it definitely lived up to that ranking on this day. 
It's common that it will light in under 10 strikes and nearly always in under a minute. Okay, now we've really got some momentum going, but we're starting to lose a little bit of daylight. Let's see how many more we can get before this day hike is over. We were pretty happy to come across this great burdock because for time's sake, it is one of the easiest plants to harvest and process for flint and steel fire making. It is also a very common plant, too common for many people as it's considered an invasive species. But it was a welcome sight to us on this day and we have also had so much success with this plant that we basically had added it to our day's tally before it even took a spark. And now it's time to set our sights toward the water we want to find our way down to the river because we know of one incredible plant that lives down there and if we can find it, it'll almost guarantee success. And one more tally before it gets dark. This is another common plant and it loves to grow along rivers. It's easy to harvest and easy to process and perhaps the most effective no-char flint and steel tinder that we've worked with. The question when working with mugwort for us it's not whether or not it'll be successful. The only suspense really is seeing in how few of strikes we can get it to ignite. With most of these plant tenders, we consider getting an ember in between 10 and 20 strikes as a major success. But with mugwort, if it takes us over 20 strikes for success, I'm actually a bit surprised because I am now so conditioned to seeing it grab and hold an ember in less than 10 strikes and many times in less than five. This occasion was no different and you are about to see mugwort fire tinder at its best. Go for it. I didn't believe you. Oh, look at this. Got two of them. That was one hit. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and do it on the first strike again. <laughs> All right. That was two strikes. No, sorry. Okay. It's all right. Next. Got it. Five strikes. Three embers. So you got, that was two different sparks, but just went in one spot. Oh, I, I did get it. <laughs> I did get it in here, and here, uh, two places. How many do you want? Now, I don't want to leave you with the impression that every tender we came across was as successful as the ones we just showed you. There were several that we tried on this hike that were not successful, even after attempting hundreds of strike attempts, even tenders that we had previously had success with in the past. The plants that we expected to perform well did, and the plants we knew would give us some difficulty did as well. The research and experimentation had already been done over the past two years, and if you want to see the full video that covers all of our research and findings, which highlights 30 different successful no-char flint and steel common plant tender variations, 
ranked in order by effectiveness, you can see that great work by clicking the link here or in the description. Who knows, maybe some of these common plants are growing right near you. Thanks for watching.